The Effenrad Snowboard Podcast is presented by Vans. Season 8 of Effenrad is sponsored by Wired Snowboards, Anon Optics, The Boardroom Snowboard Shop, FindAnEpicAgent.com, and Tribute Board Shop in Nelson, B.C. Wired Snowboards can work with your imagination to create a one-of-a-kind snowboard with a three-year warranty. Their Vancouver factory is busy creating hand-built snowboards, and Wired Snowboards are in their sixth season. They've got snowboarding legend Devin Walsh on the team. His board is awesome, by the way. Check it out at wiredsnowboards.com, where you can see tons of examples of custom builds and their stock boards that are ready to ship today. Ask a dealer near you to carry Wired Snowboards. I'm super excited to get a new Wired board this season. It's going to be a Vantage 154 for local mountain all-terrain riding. Buy yourself a Wired Snowboard. You'll be stoked. Support also comes from DeKine, Mount Seymour, Grouse Mountain, Pro Standard GoPro Accessories, and Volcom Outerwear. Please subscribe to, like, and share our YouTube channel. And if you're already watching, thank you so much. DM me and I'll send you something cool. Special thanks this episode to Beneath Base Layer, Capita Snowboards, Union Bindings, Cole Headwear, and ThisPlaceIsAwesome.net. Scott Stevens is a professional snowboarder who loves snowboarding more than almost anyone I've ever met. He was noticed for his how is that even possible style of riding and because he's so fun to watch he's filmed over 20 video parts this year his pro model on capita snowboards is a tribute to the andy hetzel and noah selaznick skateboard truck base graphics done with the help of jamie thomas himself and it turned out absolutely amazing scott's creativity has kept him in the spotlight with a solid fan base of snowboarders who can't wait to see what he'll do next He's a dad, an archivist. You should see his snowboard magazine and video collection. A creative and a really nice guy. Stoked to bring you this interview with the one and only Scott Stevens. General's a great guy. (laughs) We go back quite a ways too. And it's always fun seeing somebody that's a good friend of Sean's because, you know, more than 10 times out of 10, they're going to be a friend of mine. Yeah, I I could see you on dinos. That could I, I rode one actually before I got on Capita. I... Uh, in 2007 I was riding dinos and it was fun I rode the board with the uh I rode the Bernie board I'm sure you guys know Bernie yeah and I rode the uh the one that says like funk but it's crossed out it says fuck or yeah it's crossed out yeah yeah he's brilliant with his stuff but uh yeah I'm happy to win it, it the way it did but dinos I have mad respect for Sick, sick. Yeah. So, I mean, you were telling me you started in 94. We don't need to do yeah. a full... I mean, yeah, you haven't no. done one, so it kind of feels like we maybe we should do that. Yeah, I mean... What was the board that you started on? Well, I love that when I told you I, I started at the end of 94, that you, it actually surprised you. And, like, oh, yeah. that made me stoked because, yeah. like, when you're as fanatical about something, um, you know, like snowboarding, it's fun to have a little bit of roots in it you know what i mean hell yeah so 94 is deep roots yeah, at this cool. point yeah. right like if you look at the history of snowboarding 94 is still pre like industry standard twin tip stuff and like people are still experimenting with shit well let me tell you what <clears throat> my mind can remember me seeing on hill on this is a, a hill in um western massachusetts called blanford or maybe it was actually mount tom at the time i was riding Blanford or Mount Tom, I was seeing Burton Ouija boards. I was seeing Noah's Arcs. I was seeing Burton Twins. I mean, let's give it up for Burton. I was loving the Burton thing. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. around that time. Those Burton Twins were sick. They were a little late to the game because there were some other, you know, like the Joyride yeah. stuff was really not totally twin, to be honest, but Ride was killing it with some twin see, stuff. See, I didn't see many rides or it just didn't. I know it's that West Coast. I know rides. It's West Coast. Yeah, yeah. We're not seeing any Mervins, but, you know, right, when we right. did, we were like, what the? <laughs> yeah, because there were some twin Mervins really early on, too. But there was a real push for it because it was obvious from skateboarding, right? Because we'd just gone through no nose, tiny nose, kick nose, popsicle stick. Yeah, I mean, I I was right into the 
fat boy jibbing era, you know? Yeah. But yeah, uh, that's sick. A T Bolton. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, my my first board though to answer your question was um, it's not this is this is the honest version was a board called a Crazy Creek. I think it was like a. It's a Jamie Salter special. It's it was like you a, know of it. Yes, I think there was a European brand called Crazy Creek yeah. that existed for a while, and then the Canadian. Whoever, like, they went out of business, they got so bought. You know, then, you yeah, know the yeah, roots. Yeah, yeah, yeah Crazy yeah. Creek to me was just like a brand that I don't, I wasn't that proud of. But then I, the next, right. the following season, or even maybe that season, nah, it wasn't the same season. Because let's face it, when you're that age, your parents aren't buying you two. Ten a years old, yeah. you're not getting two. Yeah. So it was a Santa Cruz H type, maybe double wide. Sick. You like, know, so like had the, the wood the, with the, the see through. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the like see-through. the windows. So that was my yeah. first. And that's a great board. Yeah. And right. I had Burton. Um, they were called Stumpy Boots. <laughs> Or airwalks. I was, yeah. I was, had both. And then I had, um, Burton freestyles or sick. Maybe I, I can't remember if I or my friend had, Ross had the uh, contacts, the baseless Burton ones. Remember those? Yeah, I sure yeah. do. Yeah, so, that's sick. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great era. That's like, that is, for me, I moved out west at that time and was working in from a shop. where from ontario so oh that's right oh, so northern ontario there. okay yeah but we met out here cool and but yeah yeah N- northern ontario is desolate and cold you ride mount tremblant is that close or you wrote it i wrote there? it yeah. yeah i wrote it um there was a big air contest going on when i was there i was just a little kid and uh I remember. I wonder who was there. Yeah. <laughs> I oh, wish yeah. I knew those. Yeah. What names were running that thing? You know. Uh, you came up from Massachusetts. Yep. For that? Yeah. 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 Because that people don't really realize how that lines up. Probably if they're out west. No. Is that yeah. like Ontario and Quebec kind of match up with like upstate New York yeah. and New See, England? Yeah. Uh, I'm speaking for myself, but if you're from Western Massachusetts, you're riding Vermont, Mount Snow, Stratton. So going up to Tremblant was like a once in a lifetime thing as a, a kid, you know. Rad. It was like we're making a big trip because we're just riding butternut and uh, I don't know if you know these mountains, but a little, yeah, yeah, yeah butternut yeah. and Blanford and I, I mean, I'm when you're Western Massachusetts, like Springfield, like Boston even seems pretty far, you know. So we don't. I'll wear a Boston hat, but I don't claim like <laughs> I'm live in Boston. Right. So. Right. And we never go to New York, by the way. Like. My family would never go to New York to snowboard. I don't even think I've ever done it. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Connecticut, yeah. Yeah. New Hampshire, of course. Yep. But yeah, anyhow. Were you skating before you started snowboarding? I mean, this we're talking about a little kid now. Yeah, when I you're was, 10 years yeah, old. Yeah, 10 years old. No, I played baseball and I snowboarded first. Yeah, my family was uh, like, my dad was an outdoor enthusiast. He, he ran a company where he took people caving and rock climbing, oh, kayaking shit. and rafting. And skateboarding to them was like kind of like a Bart Simpson type thing. <laughs> like it wasn't like, it wasn't. Uh, there snow, was no infrastructure. Snowboarding was yeah. mountains yeah. and it was being yeah. outdoors. So if you were an outdoor adventure enthusiast, yeah, like you were stoked on like snowboarding, you know, because we were cross country skiing yeah, uh, in like, you know, the early 90s. So snowboarding was an easier transition. And I found skateboarding a few years later cool yeah 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 i can't even imagine what kind of snowboarding you're doing when you're 10 years old are you are you're not watching videos yet well you know i was seeing them but it wasn't like we were saying the mac dog thing i was seeing i saw the i got the adventure scope video at mount tom is that your first video it's my very first that's why i'm (laughs) so so, that's why i feel so gnarly about it like yeah told jp and when i was on a trip with him he I never even heard of that. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. So Adventure Scope, well, it's bored with the world. Yep. It's a double feature. So what it is? There's, there's two it's, of them I have. Yeah. Here, so I have Shadrach, Meshach, that's, and Abednego. Yeah, Abednego. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's insane. It's pretty cool. That's insane. So that was peak Jacques. So Jacques Russo, I'll just give yeah, you. Yeah, hook me uh, up. This is the backup for. This is the background for what you were watching. Yeah. Jacques Russo saw snowboarding. Actually, he just wanted to be an action sports movie maker and he read he read a book or or he had a like a point by point that he had to do okay and he had to find a champion to do a film about he made a great film and somebody (laughs) said craig kelly 
Oh, lives. He got like 20 grand up front to do that movie from an investor. He made the movie, and like if you watch it, Smooth Groove, it's like what, four days at Hood? Like it's not much snowboarding, but Jake saw it. Jake had nothing to do with it, but Jake saw it and was like, we'll buy, you know, 500 copies or whatever it was. And then they partnered on board with the world. And then he must have. Chill. Yeah. He must have. They, did they make Fear of Flat Planet? Too? That's him. Okay. That's yeah. him. I got some history. I'm you learning. know. I'm learning. Yeah. So Jacques is from Squ- Squamish, and he still makes films today. No kidding. This yeah. dude changed my yeah. changed my life. You can listen to the whole thing in the. Oh, you have show. him. I have him for one of the Craig Kelly oh, episodes. Oh, no kidding. It's Jacques. Yeah. And then what? Because he also made Let It Ride. So he had all the archival footage of Craig. Okay. So put it together for Let It Ride. Got we you. did the interviews. <sighs> Crazy. Yeah. 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 Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego did not do very well. No. Yeah. I mean, I loved it. You got to realize my dad just bought it for me at the Mount Tom shop, which is it's closed <sighs> yeah. area now. But yeah. good memories. Yeah. These are. The soundtrack is fun. It's Dude, Beastie Boys. Suicidal Tendencies. Suicidal Tendencies. Um, yeah. I mean, those huevos rancheros were all over that fucking <laughs> yeah, thing, for better true. or for worse. <laughs> yeah, man. That was the heyday of filmmaking. Yeah. Because if you could make a film, that was why there were three of them. Yeah. Is that you, you could sell three different films at for three times the money. Yeah, it's cr- yeah. it's a small world, man, because yeah. like I... I loved that Whistler section. I, you know, I've never actually ridden Whistler in my life. You as just long as I'm, mind. Are you serious? I swear, I'm not even kidding. I went up there when I was filming for this Transworld movie, Get Real. I ate a, a weed cookie at Mark Landvik's house. And the <laughs> next thing I know, I was fucked for the whole time we were in Whistler. And I, I, I swear, my mind is fragile. And... Uh, I, was it on purpose you ate the weed cooker? Was uh, it? I was so drunk, which, and um, this guy off like I was at Landvik's house, and this guy came up to me. It wasn't Mark, somebody else, and I took the whole thing when the rest of my friends Grenier and I think Jed Anderson was there. And do you know Gary Milton? No, anyway, I, I know he's the a name, filmer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They all smoke weed and do these things. This is my first time. <laughs> And they had like a little quarter of it, yes. and I had the whole thing because yeah. I wasn't aware of like literally, like what I was getting myself into. You freeze and, up? Did uh, you I've... think you were gonna die? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. sucked. Yeah, it really sucked. That is, that's a classic. Like I can't breathe. I think I'm gonna die. It's, the it, paranoia that the paranoia, that comes yeah. along with it really, it sobered me up for like wanting to hang with my friends with drugs. Yeah. It was like, oh, let's do acid. Let's no, you're you can't even eat weed. Like you're I mean, we're using common sense here from that day, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, it's not for everybody and it's, you know, and that's not the right time. Yeah, to, I'm to not going to bash it. Right. Like, right. But that's, it when you're hammered in the middle of the night. Oh, and, dude, I Yeah, you eat too much and then yeah, you're you're you would have had a really bad 48 hours or something i'm glad you say 48 hours because sometimes i tell people it was multi-day and they're like there's no way you were high for two days no one time i ate so i was smoking hash and it was like bumming me out because it was lasting really long (laughs) and so it's really potent just like uh marijuana extract yeah and you can eat it and so i just ate the last little bit which would have been you know I don't know. It, it didn't look like that much to me. Yeah. And I was up all night sweating like crazy. Yeah. And I had to stay home from work and I was up most of the next night and I was still fucked the next day. Well, I didn't I didn't ride Whistler and I, and I, <laughs> and what I was getting at yeah. was that 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 section in Shadrach with both Seth Miller and Seth Neary was like one of my favorite parts in the I movie. I remember when they came to Whistler no, to see, film. See, yeah, this is crazy. Yeah. We're having like a Yeah. Because it made waves. That's the thing. It made waves. Yeah. And it, it, like people were like, these guys are from out of town. Like, I actually, um, a friend of a friend knows Seth Neary and we, t- we chatted and uh, I still find it weird when these older pros who pioneered shit like know what I'm doing. I'm like, I'm like, this is strange, you know? But, it's Yeah, it was weird that you, it, for me, that you listen to the show, I'm like, how is that even possible? Yeah, I mean... Because I think of you as the youngest generation of snowboarders. Yeah, yeah, well, you're, you <laughs> see and hear what I have, and I know, yeah. I know, 
I tick more than some of the snowboarders. Although I did on Grenier's podcast love and 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 Ethan's um how Mark McMorris said he was more of a student of the game. I wouldn't have pegged him for that, but just him saying that I was I loved it. Yes, yes. Well, cool. well, when you grow up somewhere, and this is this is you as well, right? When you grow up somewhere where you're not in a mountain town and you don't have all that like. It's very rare that the person that grew up in Whistler becomes yeah, the guy at the top because yeah. you move there having been somewhere where you were just dying to go to Whistler. <laughs> yeah, you're right? just like a caged animal. Yeah, I was definitely – you guys wouldn't – I don't even have the footage to back it up, but I used to get hurt and I used to tomahawk myself into icy landings and oh. you get smarter as things yes. go on. and yeah. Your snowboarding evolves for better or for worse. Like I was telling you some of my stuff, I, I'll watch my old stuff and I'll be like, ah, it didn't age that well, you know? <laughs> and I know that. I know that more than like, dude, the shit I get on Instagram recently, I'm like, fuck, where did pe- people are heartless? But maybe they think I, I am not evaluating myself, but I'm evaluating myself to the point where like when somebody talks shit, I'm like, yeah. I can see some of that. It's so yeah. hurtful. It's so hurtful when it like is on the money. Yeah, or there's a you shred know? of truth where you're like, yeah, "Fuck!" Yeah. Well, well, that's it. The, the the shredded truth for me is on the money. Yeah. I, I was exaggerating with my son Bowen, who's 19, and I was like, "This guy just trashed me, dude. Like it sucks." And then I read it out loud, and he he gave me eight out of ten. And he said it was good. But you took away the, the but, worst. Uh, but I was looking going, well, bomb hole is 10 out of 10. Yeah. And Powell movement's 9.5 out of 10. And I'm like, holy shit, that's not fair. And so I internalized that shit. And it's a year later and I go read it again. I'm like, that was a nice review. The guy was actually awesome. I mean, I couldn't stop listening to your Jamie Lynn interview. It was really nice. He is such a sweet person. Yeah, I was, I was capped. I was, I was in for the for the ride it was oh, fun that's dope. well yeah. and he he's one of those superstars that um influenced other superstars yeah like De- devin was admittedly trying to ride like jamie yeah, yeah that's definitely. cool to prop people out. i love that i love here and i even want to just say my guys too because that's Please. that's how it yeah. works you know yeah or that's how it's there's no there's no right or wrong way to do this shit but right. the way i like to credit the sources yeah and yeah that's you guys have to be i'm just making this connection now you guys have to be around bam margera's age because he grew up when you see bam you know yeah i'm 38 bam's probably 40 right right yeah and and he so he was the early adopter with the video camera oh yeah filming everything and you're the same guy right like how soon into snowboarding do you yeah. or your friends well, have video cameras on each other? I love that question because I, I thought about this recently and it's it's funny because at that age in snowboarding with the accessibility of cameras and it being cold and you also getting to ride only weekends because your resort's only on the weekends, you don't film. So my introduction to a lot of filming was skateboarding, you know, because cool. it's just, it's easy. I'm out in my backyard. I got the damn thing plugged in if I don't have the battery to the extension cord. Rad. And we're filming skating, you know? Like, that's... Snowboarding was like, oh, dude, I got this one 360 from 1997 to show people, you know? Like, that's all I have. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's nothing. Yeah. And I and just so you guys know, I live... I love clips. Like, it's an obsession, you know? It's like, it started that day in my driveway um with maybe even a boombox playing so that's like how you're getting your tunes and you know and then yeah. you're learning how to mix it on a analog mixing board or something but uh like almost like a reel to reel exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah. skate skateboarding was yeah snowboarding i don't have much stuff from that time period because first of all who are you gonna stop you're snowboarding <laughs> you're going down the hill like yep. you don't have time yep. like nobody we you're off. You're out of school. You're you're loving it. You're you're snowboarding. It has like I think skaters who thought it was too much of a a bite of skateboarding are coming around to it now because they're like these dudes have the mountains. They have something special. Yeah. That's like they could do the same damn thing over. And maybe you could say that for skateboarding. I'm like kind of losing what I'm talking about right here. But 
I mean, there was hate and yeah, like the, but 94 it's a little bit because i've even seen some of my friends oh yeah i've there even seen some of my friends that were like these skate purists be like damn snowboard's kind of fun you know yeah. oh yeah that's Absolutely. that's great for yeah. dudes like yeah. us that, yeah you know i think there's a lot more tolerance around these like hard edges that we had mm-hmm. when we were kids right yeah like i was saying with place it blows my mind some people ski and snowboard like <laughs> not like it's like like what do you what do you do oh i ski and snowboard and you go well <laughs> yeah that's really? crazy talk to me yeah exactly but I, it's not crazy for kids these hey, days yeah i mean yeah or uh, maybe dog. i'm talking out of town dog uh, dog dreaming um <laughs> nice. no you're not it, the thing is with skiing it's just that like I see so many great skiers that are like, they're like, yeah, I, I get some influence from snowboarders. And I was like, damn, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I haven't been looking the opposite way, but I honestly should because there's probably a lot of inspo we could pull from skiing. But I had a realization a few years ago that if I learned how to ski, I would probably have a lot of fun doing it. I, yeah. I've gone my whole life thinking that it was impossible for me to have fun skiing. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I hadn't said it out yeah, loud. Yeah, yeah. I just was like, that's not fun. Yeah, I'm stubborn. It's so all. <laughs> if I. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably. I'm too old to learn now. Yeah, I mean, the cross country phase was like, that almost propelled me into snowboarding more because at, as a kid, you're not trying to get cardio, you know? No. So zero. I was just with my dad and, <laughs> and my sister. And as soon as snowboarding came along, I was like, well, fuck, this is. This is not Bart Simpson skateboarding, so I don't have to be like whatever kind of vandal my parents thought I was going to be. <laughs> but like, fuck, I, like I said, I, I always credit this, is those, um, the show GT did, SBTV. Yeah. Like w- when I would see that, I was like, I want to be these people, that's you know? So and rad. that's, those were all pulled from the Fall Line films, right? Most yep. of that footage? Yes. Yeah. Totally. So I used to always think, oh, geez, if I would have got into it a little bit earlier. Yeah. But no, I would have still been me. Yeah. And I would have been writing crappier stuff and I wouldn't have progressed any faster because the thing that kept me from being a professional snowboarder was I didn't I didn't have the work ethic and I didn't have the drive to be the best at it or any of that stuff that it really actually takes to do it. There's a there's a certain level of confidence that I, I don't even have that I see some writers have. And that's what, like, what, when you see that, yeah, you're like, well, it, like you're going to do some stuff that's really dangerous, you know? Yes. And, uh, yeah. And it's not dangerous to them. I, no, I don't know if no, I'm you're following right. what no, you're saying, but, no. like, I've stood on top of something with Devin where I'm looking going, this is very scary to me. Yeah. And and he just blasts it, and then I, this isn't even an exaggeration. He said, "Yeah, there's a footage of me one time trying to go over that tree over there." I'm like, "Oh, from from where?" He's like, "From here." I mean, someone. And then you look at it talk. and you go, "You you have to be lying right now." Yeah. That who would have thought to f- you couldn't fly that far he goes i I made it but it just didn't look very good and then i saw the footage of it and i was like he wasn't lying he he like the thing that i was afraid to go off at medium speed he milked all the mountain to get the speed to hit it as fast as he possibly could and possibly land on a 10 foot transition yeah, I mean, the shit that that guy's jumped off and some of that stuff in Whistler that I haven't got to see. I mean, yeah. those guys are fucking 60 feet up. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's uh, it's a real skill for judging speed. And, the, and Devin has it from my just watching it's him in so many videos. that it's not arrogance. That's the thing that's oh, fascinating yeah, him? about no, it. You don't that get it's not that. Arro- arrogance. It's just confidence. Yeah. You know, he he's like a great person to reference for who i watched when i was young and now it's evolved to a person like zeb powell who i'm around a lot oh sick. where yeah it's not arrogance watching zeb ride is not arrogant it's it's uh it's just it's special it's mind-blowing yeah it's special it's like it's confidence and it's like it's he if he's around the right person that he can put on a show <laughs> you're gonna get a great show because he does it for 
he doesn't just do it for himself. Right, right. Which is like kind of heroic in a way. Absolutely. Because like I've done things on my snowboard that weren't just for me a lot of times. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is going to stoke some people out. And I get that feeling with Zeb when he's riding. He's like, he's doing it for everyone, you know? That's so dope. Yeah, and that's where that extra power comes where you, when you're now, instead of a video part surfing on your phone, you yes. know, that clip of Zeb comes up and you're like, oh. how? Yeah. How? Yeah, I mean. Where did he come from? Like, how are you guys, how are you hanging out? With well, him? that's the cool thing is, and I don't know the the burton thing but 32 i get to hang out with him because he's full on 32 which is crazy for burton to let a dude go halvesies like that but it is a new world and i do got to tip my hat to burton quite heavily for even like being like not head to toe like the old guys or like the my heroes you know yeah yeah that's pretty cool i don't obviously i don't know the the behind the doors with that but yeah, yeah that's how i'm seeing him and then um I was at High Cascade. I was a coach at High Cascade forever, so I saw all a lot of the young guys come up, the Rad. different Seberts, the Max Warbingtons, the yeah. uh, Ben Fergusons, and I would see them, and I would, you know, see a dude do a good method off a fifty foot jump, and I go, "That dude's gonna get sick," you yeah. know. Yeah. Zeb, I saw skating barefoot in 2017 or something, which to me is fucking last year, you know. But it's yeah. kind of a long time ago now. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. When do you get to the point where you're starting to either compete or film things mm. that are? Oh, we'd have to jump ahead there. Yeah. So what I'll goes on slope. in between? Is it mostly just like riding for fun type stuff? I mean, I was always making videos with my crew. And that's why, if I can segue into the Jamie Thomas thing, which I showed you that board, is Please. I have a lot of empathy and for Jamie getting a bad rap because I kind of relate to it. I was the guy making the movies. I would try not to give myself Ender, but I would be in the movie, you know? And sure. I would, just like a normal human being, try to look out for yourself a lot. Maybe too much sometimes. Well, okay, so I can pick your brain on behalf of, like, the curi- curiosity around yeah. Jamie giving him Ender parts, giving himself Ender parts. Like, there's got to be a calculus that you do that you go, well, this is the best part. Honestly, He's a guy you want to see, dude. <laughs> like, yeah. It's a I hard had thing. I a problem with it, and, to be honest. You know, human nature, there's going to be people that do have a problem with it. Yes. But at the end of the day, let's see the numbers. Whose board's selling the best? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, can you you just throw yourself in the middle there and people guess that y- you should have had the end part? That, there's a, there's psych- psychology for all this shit, you oh, know? Totally, so I think man. he just fucking cuts the bullshit. He's like, fuck it. <laughs> like, yeah. And yeah. he was right for a long time, you know? When did you meet him? When did you first meet Dude, him? I've never actually met him in person. And that's why it's so crazy. I have a damn board. Yeah. That's a signature board. This isn't a board that Capita did a collab with. That's right. That's my fucking board. That's unbelievable. So we just had conversations about Matt Hensley. That's yep. his favorite dude. Of course. That and, makes a lot uh, of sense, actually. Yeah, that's his favorite dude. He was like, I do this because of Matt. And I was just like, oh, because the thing that's kind of fucked up is when I watch the Nine Club, Roger knows more than I do. Uh, yeah. But I'm pretty good in there with some <laughs> of my old skate history. Like, Sick. Me and Kelly, Sick. obviously, we're similar age. I, I'm on the four-on-one tip. I'm like, yeah, I know that, I know that. And I'm just like, God, i got to fill my brain with other things. But I can't. I love it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I met Jamie. Um, He started, he, he like reposted one of my tramp skate things one time out of the fucking blue, Dude. like six or seven years ago. Yeah. I was like, well, that was fucking weird, you know? And then uh, I'd buy zeros here and there because I was like, I always thought it was weird, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But awesome. And then um, this is really cool. Uh, Chris called me. He's like, hey, I'm having Jamie on the bomb hole. I was wearing a zero hoodie I bought that day. I go, dude, I'm fucking wearing a zero hoodie. He told Jamie that, and that's really what kicked it off. That's Jamie so couldn't sick. believe Man, I don't want to speak for him, but he he was hyped. Yeah. Immediately two weeks later I got a package of zero shit. Oh my god. Yeah. We started talking. He just realized that you know, I'm a big fan of skating and his. And um, you know, I'm not like some of the 
the haters he gets. I'm a fucking fanatic. I'm like, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like Jamie, jump on this. My fucking favorite part of yours. He's like, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to hear that. You know? Yeah. He's yeah. like, dying to live is my best part. I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay, but jump on this. You know? But anyhow, yeah. One thing led to another, and uh, Capita made the boards with him. I explained to him how I really wanted to do the skate trucks thing to honor Noah and Hetzel in my own way, if people could see it. And he was like, oh, I don't know about that. I don't know if that's, that's a, is that cool? I'm like, dude, <laughs> it's fucking cool. Like, so cool. It's cool because you're here and you're a pro skater and you're endorsing it. And I know about these guys and I know about the impact Noah had, you know? Yes. Came about. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's sick. he, um, just to even take it one step further, he, those are his slide marks from probably the Pood skate park. He went out for a month straight trying to get these things re- perfect. And he had front, <laughs> front feeble marks on here. I've told the story a lot. He had front feeble marks on it. And he went back and looked at my Instagram and he goes, you, you don't do, do front feebles. And I go, no, I, I can't really do them. He's like, all right, I, I took them off. <laughs> I was like, this guy's out of, I was like, but I can do switch crooks. We should put, and he's like, it's too late. You know? <laughs> pretty cool i love yeah. that authenticity because yeah there that was missing from the definitely from the hetzel board yeah it, it was it was more of a concept than it was an actual like you've taken time to make this perfect yeah and um that sticker on top there is the shop sponsor that's my first sponsor theory skate shop and um rad jamie was like he wouldn't let any other stickers be on the board if they were snowboard stickers which i thought was funny he's like what what's what's the sponsor of yours that's skateboarding i'm like well they've been make they've been a skate shop since 1998 he's like boom let's put it on there let's stoke them out and i was like dudes are gonna shit their pants when they see the <laughs> board is on a their their logo is on an actual pre- pressed capital board yeah <laughs> without them knowing that's amazing dude yeah yeah he's a cool he's an amazing dude he didn't have to do that for us and also blue and i were like going through the zero catalog and we're like whoa what board would be cool to do we're like the the we were thinking the i wanted the bloody this the drip the dripping blood with the skulls yeah and um blue and i were like yeah that'd be sick we hit jamie up and jamie's like uh this brand has like almost 30 years of legacy we can't just put it on a a snowboarder basically he wasn't down he was just like i'm gonna design a different board that doesn't months passed and he wasn't getting back to us and (laughs) we just get the fucking most you know perfect he, he just he said fuck it. He was like, I'm gonna yeah. give these guys the. He, we didn't get the skull with the bloody drip or whatever, but we got the one of the most iconic ones, you know, which yeah. is yeah. What anyhow. a dude. Yeah, it's a it's pretty. What a trip to like go from being a kid super fan to yeah. being, you know, a friend of this guy now. Yeah, and we will meet in person someday. Yeah, of yeah. course you will. Yeah. Yeah. But, oh, that's awesome! Yeah, I I really wanted to tell you guys that and just thank you. Yeah, yeah. He, he kind of did a he did a cool he did a solid for um the snowboard industry in my opinion. Yeah, well, so, we were talking about it off mic. There was a yeah. bit of animosity to, towards snowboarders from skateboarding, and yeah. probably rightfully. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm I'm cool with it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there was like Damian Sanders and and like the Day Glow. Yep. You know, and people couldn't figure out, well, are we going to do hard boots? Are we going to do one in the front and a soft boot in the back? Like, But, like, the thing about, like, and totally, and, and Damian Sanders from my little look back library, I mean, this guy fucking ripped. He, he ripped. tweaked in those things. He but, tweaked. yeah, he might have gave uh, some of the Well, it's the purists, image thing. Yeah. Right? Like, it's like these, you know, flashy... Like yeah, it was it was it was glam guys. rock. It was weird shit, yeah. compared to like skateboarding. Well, skateboarding kind of went through the same thing. It to be did. honest, skateboarding and snowboarding, I thought, were separated by you know like ten years or something. But eighties skateboarding and eighties snowboarding, they're kind of similar. Yeah, in that there all of a sudden is this weird fashion thing going on with it's Christian so Hasoy ripping <laughs> yeah, shirts. Yeah. Or, like, you know, the way that someone looked was really important yeah. to, like, you know, a 10-year-old me yeah. in 83 or whatever. Yeah, so that's, yeah, more like a 15-year-old me. And I mean, you're trying to figure out, like, because I went to camp at, at Wendell's when I was 16. And most of it was basically trying to figure out, like, 
how do I actually look like a genuine snowboarder guy? I mean, that was big to me. Yeah. Like, you know, call it what you will. Like, maybe not the main focus of snowboarding, but right. you want to get in those those clothes. You want to feel like you're, you, you join the club, you yeah. know? Yeah, well, at 94 is fat pants. Uh, tail end of fat pants, but like right the dead end of fat pants. Are were there fat pants for little ten year old kids at that point? We were we were rocking some. Nah, you know what? No, because it wasn't super practical, and we're not spending our own money. You know, because I'm ten, <laughs> yes, so like yes, I'm wearing hand me downs of my sister and yep. my dad and my mom and stuff, and a lot of stuffs coming from either Old Navy or. EMS, if an EMS was like a REI type brand, Eastern Mountain Sports, but it's on the East Coast. Yep. So, yeah. And so, and so do you wind up getting into competitions out there? Like, uh, is that a thing I did that some contests. Yeah. Or was it more like did you go directly into the filming yourself thing? Uh, well, I was always trying to film, and when I look back on it all, it was just like the snowboarding was like we weren't putting enough effort into filming the snowboarding. Right. So. It was just like we'd send these sponsor me tapes out, and I can see why people weren't biting. You know, they're just yeah. like, and I couldn't, I couldn't beat a lot of the guys in the area because I wasn't good enough. You know, and that's, that's just like some of it, just talent, and some of it, a little work ethic. And then, as things evolve, you know, you start seeing guys that you're like, whoa, they're taking a different approach, like Jay Brown and Travis Parker, and and so on, and. um uh, and skateboarding, like I was, I was pulling from both, you know. Yes. And, uh, the only way you can pull from both is if you're watching things like till your eyes bleed. And I, <laughs> I, I do, and I was. And um, at the beginning, you're you're copying, you yes. know, you're just yeah. copying people. And then as time goes on, you're starting to find your own groove. If you're getting, I mean, if you're starting to get a little buzz, like you're like, all right, this is working, you know. Yeah, what was the first little buzz? Um, the first buzz was Bridges called me because I made a video part because I love making video parts and I I won this contest um with the uh, third robot food movie. Wow. Yeah, I won the contest. The, what was the contest? It was uh, called Part of a Lifetime and it was in Snowboarder Mag and it was in 2004, and the winner got their part in the bonus of Afterlane. Oh, that's amazing. And uh, yeah. That was heavy. I have a, a robot food snowboard here. Only one of two made. And uh, I should have found it for before you guys came because <laughs> yeah. it's it's yes. pretty shocking to see. I'm sure you even like at the age. So I would have been 25. You would or no, I would have been 20. You would have been 30. You yeah. probably loved robot food as well. Oh, of course. Yeah. Ro- yeah. Robot food was was new, new lifeblood into the scene. I would walk. I would go to resorts just knowing that this robot thing, food thing happened. And I would just assume people kind of like knew who I was, <laughs> but they had no clue. <laughs> I love but this it is the so thing much. when you're a kid, you're just like, you're just, you're just so stoked to make a little bit of noise. Yeah. Just a tiny bit of chatter. And That's I, big noise, actually. Yeah. Like it is, that is big noise. Yeah. Bridges and, called me and he was like, you won. Got, got in a magazine and that, it, and that was the first big, big thing for me. That's incredible. Yeah. And so that stoked you out. And that part, what like, give me a breakdown of what was in there. What? Um, it was skating and snowboarding, and it was my first trip to Hood. Um, well, my I went as a camper because I broke my back and. Um, oh shit! Yeah, well, I, I told Ross Powers this, but I was at Stratton, and I was doing a lot of toe side rodeos, like everybody, you know. Yeah. And uh, I just chucked one off a flat lip and i was i stayed upside down but the reason i chucked it was because i was all gassed up because ross was behind me and he had just won see this would have been the year 2000 so he would have he was a big name oh yeah are you kidding ross powers yeah yeah and um so you were hyped that he was gonna see this hopefully like i was like oh he's right there i'm gonna chuck you know and i just stayed upside down and i broke i had a compression fracture so it wasn't like but um those yeah, suck. parents sent me to Hood um, when it healed, yeah. and that was pretty huge, you know. And did you go to like High Cascade? I went to High Cascade. Yeah, I'm like, uh, I'm like, uh, I, I I think when Wendell's actually predates High Cascade. Is that right? 
or I don't know which one was there first. I'm a high cast game yeah, guy. I yeah, worked there as yeah, a coach. Yes. I went there as a camper. I there was a rivalry. I was telling. I've got a backpack. Yeah. I've just. Uh, yeah, I, just I saw like, it. I saw it. I'm just a high cast. Yeah, yeah. The high cascade thing was, um, you know, uh, throughout the years, as far as I remember, there was a battle back and yeah, forth. There was, yeah, there was. From when I was there in '91, that already existed. Yeah, it was friendly. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. But well, then I mean, we... by by like mid to late 90s the the animosity was real <laughs> i mean when i was there i i think but my ego i thought we were winning but <laughs> oh yeah high cascade no but... offense tim but high cascade never allowed skiing that was the first thing yeah once and you know... they started allowing skiing at windell's anyone who had been like kind of rooting for windell you're like yeah come on you know the thing is is and it's so fun to talk about because it's all lighthearted. But yes. when you go up there now and the shit has hit the fan and everything is everywhere, you're like, fuck yeah, this feels cool. I'm sure you guys were yeah. up there and you're like, fuck, we can ride this park. Yes. You're like, that's cool. You know, because like. It's mental. Yeah, it's, it's mental because it's, for 30 years, th- yeah. you had to pay to go to the camp just to get that level of stuff. I lived the the high life for a little and it was cool to live the high life and now that it's different i'm fucking happy for that too because yeah i mean i would love to get in that private pipe but Hell i know yeah. there's probably some big dollars in there and anybody that doesn't understand that it's like they're not cutting the pipe they're not dealing with the you're the, not paying attention. you're not paying the yeah, bills yeah, there yeah so i'd love to get in that but um but the the timberline people that are making that park up there i went up there and i saw I saw Mac Dog up there the other day. I saw Jeremy yeah, Jones. Yeah. I saw Peter Line. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I know Peter Line. I can talk to Peter Line. I don't know if he wants to talk to me back, but we had a conversations, you know? Yeah. And I'm up there and I'm with Andy Wright and I'm looking around all these Sick. things and I'm like I'm like, fuck, this place is incredible. And I've it's lived incredible. twenty-two years of my life on this mountain. How did you pick Hood? as a place to live like my, it, my wife completely like okay. i was in salt lake and i was like kind of one of those salt lake just like this is all that exists you know yes and um brighton guy yeah i was a brighton guy and yeah. i was just like this is the only thing that matters and when then, did it become brighton because it was snowbird all like when i was I growing hardly up. went to snowbird i've been there like a handful of times but uh wow. when did it become brighton i want to say like maybe like definitely jp and jeremy and seth and the, maybe the amped i wasn't a big amped snowboard guy but that was in yeah that was in a video game so and i think those dudes just put it on the map the love hate videos mikey leblanc like oh yeah i mean there it was just i came to salt lake and this crew sfk was bumping simon larson rest in peace and they were running um brighton dave dave doman and really just some fun guys that you know came after jp's wave yeah and then we transplanted in a lot of guys from massachusetts and it was just brighton you know yeah yeah i mean that's all you really hear oh but um yeah basically i was with my met my wife up at in govey um she was passing through and then she came to salt lake and lived there for a while and then her dad got sick so we moved up here and i just followed her and um and at first i was like fuck i'm better off living in massachusetts because like if you live in portland it's it's not hard especially when you have two kids what is or three kids or kids at all what is hard you know right driving a few hours but right when i first moved here i didn't have kids i had dogs yeah. so driving to hood in the rain or whatever i was like i was like man uh Salt Lake was so easy. Why did I do this? Right, right. I did it because of love. I, I, I you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> no, I chased after my wife. Yeah, and she was up here. So, would you, when you first came here, were you instantly a Meadows guy? Like it seems. No, like- no, I was a Timberline guy at first. I didn't even know Meadows existed except for whatever Mac Dog did over there. Right, because videos. you've you've seen all the Timberline yeah. stuff in videos the whole time. Yeah, and like, they're both. They're both. They're such sick. integral players of I find Mount that Hood. people that are like my level of snowboarding, which is like, you know, super excited enthusiast mm-hmm. guy, goes a lot. In Portland, you're gonna buy a Meadows Pass for yeah. some reason. There, there's there there's I don't know what it is. No, it's it's because sure Timberland's flat in the winter and the flatness makes for a great park. It's amazing. A great snowboard park it's in perfect. the winter because yeah. when the snowboard park is steep, that's 
that works for certain things. Do you guys have any idea how rare it is to have groomed powder? For a park, I mean. Oh, Groom Park? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm i guessing we're pretty lucky because, yeah. you know, actually, Meadows makes a great park. Meadows Park I this know. year, I forget yeah. what the guy's name is. Some new guys started working there. No offense to the old guys. These guys made a phenomenal park. Sick, <laughs> it's psycho, sick. yeah. But. We we came down one year when the spring passes were 99 bucks, no yeah. tax for both. Yeah. So we just bought both. And there was like a 14-foot pipe at Meadows. That <laughs> Dude, was, I know. So oh, these are some the of my cool things is that yeah. I get to talk about this pipe every time I post it. I mean, Todd, Todd Richards like watches some things. Sorry, Todd, if you find this, <laughs> I'm not trying to blow you up your scene, but he's like, I want to ride that pipe. Hell and yeah. I always am. I'm blushing because it's fun to talk to Todd about that size half oh, pipe because absolutely. You know, watch. he should, he should have a signature series, half pipe series. Yeah. Right. That he announces. 18 that, foot pipe that or, 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 or that there's grudge matches yeah. that he goes head to head with Terrier just for fun. Oh my God. Right. And I think, I don't even think 18, 18 is still a little 18 too is big. Actually, 18 is actually when you get in it Yeah. and you're a guy like me, that's like, I can ride transition, but I'm not Otterstrom, but I'm right. not just a jibber. It's, you can get messed in 18. Oh, still. hell yeah. yeah. Oh, hell yeah. 14 to 16 is this sweet 12 for me like even yeah a 12 well i wrote it i think i wrote a 12 at mammoth and it was almost harder see this is the thing yeah. i think it flattens the curve so i don't yeah. think mcmorris could beat some of the guys from when 12s were real because it they're McMorris? so much, i don't think mcmorris could i think in it, pipe yeah i think it would be so hard for him yeah it's like riding half a pipe He's a chameleon. He can kind he of turn it on on anything. It's but true. It's true. I will say, like, yeah, if you put Zeb in it, I'm not trying. That, yeah. But, I mean, he can adapt to be, like, the number one slot in a pipe like that, you know? I think, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I Just watched him boosting. at Mammoth, and I was like, Well, that was the era fuck. when, I mean, maybe it was a little after Palmer. But, like, yeah. Palmer was Terrier before I know, Terrier. I fucking... Like, just big airs. You know, I see the faucet photos of Palmer, and yeah. I it sucks because, um, I know how much Sean did for the sport. Because if you go back to the the Tahoe days, it's like kind of crazy to see him a lot younger. Mm -hmm. And um, I caught Sean. Obviously, I saw bits and pieces of him at that Red Bull Big Air, the first Red Bull Big Air, and yeah. But we're doing one footers actually, you know, and. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right. And um, I caught him mostly when he was uh, border, border cross, cross guy. and and yeah, yeah. I'm not sh like that's awesome now. But back then, I was skipping. Yeah, no, I was skipping yeah. Big Mountain in Massachusetts. I was skipping Big Mountain parts, and I was border yeah, cross. Yeah. Wasn't you know I was I was kind of ashamed of it a little bit when I was younger, and now I'm like that's just oh, what we were. It was into. it was dope. I mean, yeah. Going back and seeing it now, the things that were we were skipping, it's kind of like, holy shit, that was actually pretty impressive. What was going on there? Well, what happens does it, right when those guys come to to Baker for the slalom? Like everybody's like, oh no, but it's fucking fast. They're fast. <laughs> They're fast. They're fast. They're not like a different like species that shouldn't be able to race it. They're just fucking fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe they're on special boards or something, but. I think I said it on uh, to, to Blaze yesterday on mic. No, I said it today to Jeremy Jones. I've never. Are you talking to Jeremy? Yeah, we just randomly. <laughs> he's still up here. Yeah, Brad. Some um, we were what like, the fuck? no, not that Jeremy. Oh, Other oh, Jeremy. Oh, he's up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, oh, shit. still the right. Yeah, still same, still. Uh, same. Like, whoa, he's up here. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. He's up with his family and just catching snow and and Mount doing Hood, the same. dude. Yes. Only place you'll see these fucking snowboard celebrities up there. Just... Yeah, it's this giant, like, magnet to everybody. Well, just hang out there in the winter and you won't see any of them. Nobody. <laughs> Even in the spring. Like I said, this spring pass is 99 bucks. Nobody's there. Uh, June skiers 1. Skiers now. It's, oh, really? That place is, like, skiing is hot, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. And maybe that's our fault as snowboarders for not making it look interesting or... Yeah, it kind of goes back and forth, doesn't We're it? We're fucking. I was in the lift line at Timberline last year. Yeah. In the spring, and I was just getting fucking pinged off the head by snowballs like I was a fucking like nerd. No, come on. By skiers, and I was like, come on. It fucking switched. The last time we did a <laughs> spring trip, 
was maybe it had been two or three in a row where the skiers were dominating those parks. I want to say, though, that I wasn't mad at it. I was just like, oh, the shift. Were we mad? The we weren't is- mad. We were bummed that we were there with when they put more woo on the jumps. Oh, of course, yeah. That was the only thing. It was like, oh, this isn't as fun for us, but we understood. These guys were Dude. running a train on the park yeah. so close together and doing so much insane shit. Yeah, I, and I'm not trying to start awesome. like a... Uh, like a skier <laughs> revival, but I think it's already in, in motion. Yeah. But fuck it, let's suppress us for a little and then we'll come back. Of course we yeah, will. Cause I, I course feel course like will. I've heard maybe Genevieve's talk. He's like, yeah, skier rivalry is sick, you know? It's like, <laughs> well, I asked Palmer, it's fun, you know? Cause Palmer like, won skier cross when he was doing the border cross thing. Yeah. And I asked him, like, oh, yeah, that was just to take the piss out of him. He's like, no, I kind of like skiing. I grew up skiing. I know how to ski. I'm a good skier. And I was like, it sort of broke my heart a little bit. At that back he then, it would have broke mine. Yeah. And, and now it's almost just like, it's like, uh, this earth's got a lot to offer. Yes. He's going to fucking, he's going to go for it. Yeah. Well, first of all, if you can race against Olympic level skiers yeah. and win, like, <laughs> yeah, you uh, may yeah. as well. Yeah. Let's, let's face it. That's a, that's a pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's a badass dude, man. Yeah. Definitely. I'm stoked that he was an influence for you. And and now when I think about how often and how early in snowboarding, he, his foot was out of his yeah. body. It was nuts. Yeah. There's some iconic photos that like I couldn't recreate if I tried. People couldn't ride with both feet in yeah. at that time very well. Yeah. And, and, it, and it has gotten to be a crutch for some of us for sure, because, you know, there were times when I was snowboarding where I had some other shit I should have been learning, and I oh, was I see what so you're pegged in, kind of like a backflip or whatever. Like, like we were talking, yeah. Chad was saying about uh, judging supernatural. Yeah, backflip's not a trick. Yeah, it's uh, quite easy to right. be honest. One footed backflip. When, when Craig Morris did it, I was kind of like, "Well, that's crazy." It, it's not easy. No. Yeah, it's it's not an easy trick. You've done it. Yeah, I've done it. Yeah, yeah. I um, I can tell you some lineage of that trick Please. that I know yeah. of. Um, so, and sorry for not knowing that. I'm no. sure I saw you do it first. The no, la- the, just the last person I saw do it was McMorris. No, no, but I, this is actually right up my me. vein of like uh, of OCD. Um, <laughs> nice. I remember seeing Josh Dirksen do it. Sick. So he would have been a. We you should talk to Dirksen. Say yeah, who you he's saw another do it first. one of those. But yeah. I want to say Dirksen was the first person I ever saw do it. Sick. And then followed by the next person I ever saw do it with D- Dirksen was a melon grab one footer, and yep. the next person I saw do it was um, Christoph Weber. Was that his name? Who's he doing the robot food movie? He was he was oh, kind of like a I Im- think I, I think you're right. Weber. Yeah. I saw him do it an indie grab. So I saw him do it in Indie Grab, and I think I tried one a year later, and yeah. um, um, I would have been on an earlier phase of that trick, yeah, for of sure. Course. But like everything, I didn't do it that big, so I mean that's what tricks are there for. There's people that s- set it in motion, and I wasn't even one of them. Maybe, it, yeah, I guess if I was in the earlier stages, I would have been. But it, tricks gotten done double by Bodie Scott Vine. I mean, yeah. that's crazy shit. Craig McMorris is. <laughs> amazing at one footers tadashi fuse doesn't get a lot of credit oh that's sick that's like, a nice he name does some he was uh, i mean inglesman yes. meltdown project yes front three one foot in the yep. meltdown project i mean that was yeah uh followed by another person jesse burtner was doing front three one foots and uh bodie and it yeah. always looks so insanely dangerous yeah, but that's, he, that that is you know you're kind of categorizing that category. There you go. You can with those guys. Yeah, not they're not a bad list to be with. <laughs> a great list to be with. I think a lot of those guys, um, not me and Bodie, but <laughs> they didn't abuse it. <laughs> Bodie, Bodie's the best about it because he takes it to a level that is pretty much going to be hard for anybody else to ever get to and he still thinks he abuses it we want him to abuse it because yeah if there's gonna be a double cork done with it it's probably gonna be (laughs) bodhi oh my god i can't even believe that's where we're at now is that that could that could potentially happen you know honestly i don't think right this second just right this second that is just because a lot of the younger guys they're just 
it's deemed as uncool like how things go you know it takes five to ten years for some of these trends just, to die and yeah, then, you, or you just to, to, a, to somebody to get in there and be like fuck that i'm gonna do it blaze rosenthal told us last night before we started recording that the jib era had completely died out right now no oh way oh, back oh, oh when. yeah 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 and kurt heine was yeah, heine's a legend was you know calling him all the time saying dude Let's go film. And Blaze kind of knew he wasn't like the top level guys yeah. that would get the good day calls. Yeah. So, and he also knew if he didn't go for the bad day calls, Heine would crew up with somebody else and that would be his new good friend. And then yeah, that guy's going to get the footy. I mean, that's so still he happening. went with Kurt one day. It's pouring rain and he hit a rock jib and he hit the roof of Timberline. Yeah. He hit the roof of Timberline. And one other jib shot, and they submitted it to Mac Dog. Mac Dog said, "There's no way I'm running the roof jib because I just need to keep that relationship with those guys. Oh wow! And they don't want to oh, see that let's shit get for that sure. Shot out there. Yeah, we got to get that <laughs> shot out there, right? It, a Mac Dog shot of Blaze. Yeah, like a Heine shot of Blaze on the roof. I'll, I'll see if we can dig it up. That'd be so sick. Well, we should stop real quick because there is a video that Blaze was supposed to be in that his name's on the box, and as a kid. I was a big fan of Blaze and still am. His name was on Technical Difficulties, and I don't think he has a shot in it. Oh, that's so weird. It's right over there. Yeah, grab it. Yeah, grab it. if you look behind there, I think Technical Difficulties is back there. And he doesn't have a part. I mean, let's hope I'm let's hope I'm not like embellishing because Tech Diff. He was talking about Technical Difficulties. Is his name on there? And Simple Pleasures. Yeah, he's not in that movie or doesn't have a part in it. And I remember. Yeah, he might have like shots, but no part. Yeah, I right, can't remember right. him. But yeah, he'll if he if he watches this, he'll. Yeah. Mean, we're in like a realm of. Uh, I love it. Yeah, no, that's we're... sick. So yeah. Anyways, the yeah. story was that because he had these three shots of jibbing, um, and uh, you know, like Jeremy and JP, they were owning shit. Were tight with yeah. Mac Dog, and Mac Dog was like, dude jibbing's coming back yeah so as soon as mac dog says it and you're trying to get your mac dog part yeah you get back on what's gonna happen so like that might have uh, yeah. he might have been the spark for those guys be getting back to like jibbing is back yeah because um, it really did go out right it was like it went away big pants 94 yes. 95 96 yeah. no 97 uh, 98 let's yeah. get it back yeah yeah um, I remember back. it. Yeah. <laughs> it. Came back with a vengeance too. And there is a slight bit to it right now that um some of it's not as interesting as it used to be. Right well, this it's second. It's gone so far too, like with the yeah. X Games Real Snow stuff. I know. Those guys went they went bonkers. It's like impossible. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't want to that Frank Bourgeois, if I, I'm probably saying that terrible. No, that's but I right. mean yeah. that dude did some stuff. He's in a Bodhi category where they breezy, you know. The yeah. whiff in, in his yeah. own stylish way. Oh, you my know, God. those guys yeah. win. The whiff, yeah, yeah. That was some special stuff. Yeah, we'll we'll see it again. Uh, it's gonna be a, a bit. Uh, it goes in cycles. But you know, yeah. if you and it's ironic that I'm wearing this right now. But if if you do watch some of the du Dust Box movie, yeah, those tricks are in there. They're just not every trick. Mm. Like mm. those those it, kids can do some sketchy shit, but <laughs> they, it's just not every trick. Like a Dan part would be every trick, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So in your timeline here, we're basically at the beginning of, so you've, you've won the after lame oh, okay. contest. Yeah. I got you. I got, I, and like, I want to, do people come out of the woodwork at that point no. and say, get you're on our team now. Oh, uh, I got one Burton board. Um, from, from, a a, from a rep, yeah, yeah that's and amazing. I got a Burton board, and just so happened to be the first year Jeremy Jones was on Burton. Was it that the? It's like a night, or no? Maybe it wasn't a night. It was. It was a shakedown year. I had that yeah, shakedown yeah, board. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loved it. Um, Grenier was riding for Academy. I just met Chris, and he got me on Academy. Met Chad. Chad helped me out. We filmed videos, and I was also had just got a job at High Cascade, so I met Burtner, and Think Think was huge. Oh yeah, Chad Think and Think Think, Think. Right. yeah, and then Think Think, Think Think, because you got to remember at that time, if you're not in one of these 
20 movies coming out yeah and think tank was one of them that was getting bought at shops maybe not every shop but like it was big it was, it was a big. huge like i was it got to I, hit backcountry jumps too and they weren't big either but like i haven't done that since i was with think tank you know really yeah no i mean i got to do some try some 1080s and land some cab nines and that was only with think tank like i'm not gonna go do that with anybody else you know right because right you know, but we're living in an age right now where like it'd be pretty damn cool to see a dust box kid hit a backcountry jump and do it, or and they can, they yeah. can do way more than that. But like every time you'd see a Jed Anderson hit a backcountry jump, you were like, whoa, yes, nice. You know, yeah. Well, so. it's kind of like that next generation for, you know, if you go back far enough, people will say we used to have to do moguls and yeah. slalom and all that, and then just after that. You used to have to be good. Like an Otterstrom was great in the pipe, mm-hmm. backcountry jumps, hips, like a- anything where you go in the air. Totally. He that was his thing. There was no like specialization. Well, he had that front board down that kink too. That was pretty oh, early yeah, on right, in that right. too. That's true. So you kind of had to be a well-rounded guy. JP and Jeremy, exactly that. Dude, so like, true. Killing and, it. And that's where I come along a little bit into like the like where some of the tms and people giving me stuff were like looking at me like yeah you know but it was changing it was like a changing of the guard where it was like look at social media now i mean fuck the the doors were just little by little getting just fucking unhinged yeah and i'm lucky to be a part of that because there's no way you're taking me and romaine out (laughs) somewhere like that just wasn't (laughs) happening you know it's cool to hear you talk about it because it you never we're hiding that no no i i mean i want people to know that like i'm a fan of these people you know like when i was up at hood one of the mid 2000s and i had giggy airing over me doing a hand plant i was like i don't deserve to be in this photo with this guy (laughs) but fuck it like yeah you you know yeah you at the time you did earn your spot yeah no i mean uh it was it's been a fucking journey yeah it's, it's been not the journey. easiest path to take right like no no but i also like wouldn't be here without like a lot of my friends because i was going to do it anyways do you see some of these guys that are going at it alone yeah fuck i was with a crew of dudes that want to do the same thing as me right you know right right like that's a that's a pretty common tale but look at the guy that doesn't have that yeah well that was jim rippy jim rippy evolved in a bubble he saw the Burton guys at his home mountain when he was a lifty. Yeah. That's and then he kind of just did it on his own. Respect. Yeah. Yeah. Mad respect. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, it, everybody's got their own way of being in, in especially in snowboarding. It's very, there's, there's no one path to take. Funny you mentioned Jim Rippey because Jim Rippey would have been one of my early Burton catalog heroes reading through those things in the mid nineties. And, yes. and Jim was, um, he was easy for me to understand. You were drawn to the quirkiness. Yeah. Hawken was actually almost harder for me in those early days. Where, I understand. Yeah, where, he was a champion guy. Where Hawken now, that people try to copy him over and over again. Right. And he's still the best at yeah. being Hawken. Yeah, nobody has. Not where even close, I, I, I got so caught in the early stages of the resurgence of rail riding, you know? So yep. Hawken, I was like, he doesn't touch rails. What's the, you know? And yep. he probably knew that. He was like, I don't like him, you know, and he says it. But yep. yeah. Anyhow, yeah, Jim was uh Jim was like super early days, like I just loved it, you know. Yeah, man. He came out of nowhere. Like if you're a Burton fan, yeah, I and, loved and it. I wasn't even a Burton fan. I just I was a fan of like him in those early, you know, T V movies. Yeah. When he just kind of came out of nowhere. He replaced a kind of Damien Sanders guy yeah, with the backflip a... thing and the and the kind of lone wolf thing. Like I've heard the story, and maybe it was in a movie or in a magazine, that people would just see Damien riding, no filmer, no nothing, and he would hit gnarly shit and backflip it and just like because that's what he liked to do. I mean, how much do you love that story? The best. Yeah, it's a it's, cool story. It's the best thing that ever to think of him as disconnected from the marketing machine that would create a someone like that like the pressure to do flips and stuff if i he told me about his his 
uh, McDonald's commercial. McDonald's put snowboarding in a commercial so early on in the thing that Damien was the guy that they picked. Wow. And the shot is basically a cameraman. Damien shoots through the shot because they thought he was going to just like drop off a cliff and he went like a million miles an hour off it. He shoots out of the shot. It's so fucking huge. Uh, they they try and follow me. They can't even follow him. I mean, fuck. You throw like a person that knows how to film snowboarding in the cold weather. Oh, yeah. Fucking, you know. You still might miss a up shot. Up to their waist. <laughs> <laughs> you throw a McDonald's person out there trying to do a commercial. You no idea. Yeah. They had no idea. Oh. But And they still had to run it because it was just like he couldn't do it again. I think it, like he did like a hundred foot cliff to flat, you know? Yeah. Like he was like hurt. Yeah, these guys are... These guys are icons to me. Like yeah, I, yeah, me too. I, my, I specialize in '97 to. <laughs> so what's '97 uh, Mac Dog? Simple stuff. pleasures. Simple pleasures. Yeah, and so, you, you yeah. can't forget Kingpin too. Oh, and Kingpin, I, right? Yeah, sure. I mean, Mike though at Mac Dog. I mean, they had me pegged. Yeah. Like, Kingpin was awesome. Yep. But I was always waiting on the Mac Dog. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to say Kingpin was off brand. They were they were well, top now, tier. Now it aged pretty damn well. I, yeah, it th- did. I would say it, it almost yeah. well, hey, let's actually talk about the who aged the best. And that's those T V movies right there. Yeah. Those yeah. T V movies yeah. are shocking. Yeah. You put those in and you're a kid now. Yeah. You're like maybe some of the songs a little off, but the big mountain, it's got the scope. It's like hard to think people are gonna make better films yeah. th- that that I could be wrong. Well, they had they had unfettered access to Alaska, dude. Some of those some of those turns they do. I I'm the worst at turning a <laughs> snowboard on film, ever in powder. Yeah. One time, sure. one time I was at Brighton, and I was with Eastone. Yeah. And Eastone comes down with like sixty pound camera bag on and does a better slash than me. <laughs> like, I just like. I get too excited. I'm like, I'm excited for the fucking 50 to 100 tries I'm going to try something. So when yeah, I have to do something yeah. once, yeah, I blow my opportunity because I'm fucking such a fucking blowhard. I'm too excited, you know? <laughs> I love that. Yeah. That's so rad. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's, um, yeah, I saw that Noah shot in, I think it's, I think it's TB2. It's in the intro and he's coming down. And, and the thing is that Noah nails it. I think he's got a front three kind of natty front three in it and a lot of turns but the filming yeah is so insane like if you've ever tried to film no, anything it's, it's fucking impossible it, it's so hard and they nailed it yeah. and this is noah just riding around like a wild person yeah there's this shot of um johan olsen in mm, tv5 yeah well it's that part is fucked, but that it's part fucked. that part I didn't see because I didn't own it. I had TB7, I think. Okay. And I know we're working like a little bit up when all those other films were so iconic. Yep. But yeah, Johan does this uh, toe side turn, and I uh, I recorded it off a television screen and put it on Instagram one day. This thing was getting shared everywhere, so it was basically one of the best filmed turns in powder on his belly just like and um i was like whoa i just started a fucking viral clip (laughs) yeah from fucking 25 years ago (laughs) yeah yeah you know you kind of like think to yourself you're like damn like it's got to be a better way to like watermark footage of who films stuff because like the oh, filmer God, really yeah. gets the shit end it's of the a stick. blockchain it'll happen uh, it's I, gonna happen eventually but it's a lot of work i mean i don't i don't want that like just right. but i do film a lot and it sucks when you don't get credit for something Hell you know yeah. yeah um but that's a whole other can of worms that's like almost like there's an in- integrity there that you could pay the people yeah or not use their clips oh with social I mean? media now it's yeah. really fucking crazy it's nuts yeah it's absolutely nuts but i actually heard from mac dog's wife that they scrubbed the internet of bootleg mac dog stuff because they're gonna do oh good their own channel you already did yeah yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're all they're did. all up yeah. um it's just hard because yeah those bootlegs got a lot of a lot of a lot of views yeah totally it's too bad i heard a story that he was having trouble getting music rights that he paid for. <laughs> I was like, I could see that. I was like, damn, that's a fucking. 
I can see that but because it's so long ago and the I people know. that they made the deals with maybe it was a handshake deal yeah. who knows yeah. yeah there was a whiskey documentary that I saw because I was you know hanging around with Kearns a little bit that was made by an MTV producer or something and it had the jackass guys in it wow and it had archival footage and everybody talking about everything that sounds messy it had everybody <laughs> in it it yeah. had everyone in it and it was amazing yeah and uh it got kibosh for music rights uh. because uh MTV tried to put the music right ownership onus on Sean and Sean and then they just gave the contract to a lawyer the lawyer said yeah f you're fucked you've got the who in there yeah. like that one song alone i mean i made a movie with burner and we just went youtube style and yeah we cherry picked songs it was fun as hell yeah but youtube cleared it and hopefully those artists are getting paid you know by i mean how rad is it when cocard and those guys make their own music that's so rad. But man, I yeah. love. I don't. I don't play musical instruments well. Right. But I love music. I I didn't even know how much I love music till I found myself in front of the Hard Rock or um, yeah, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Not oh. the Hard Rock. The Rock and Roll one in Cleveland. Oh wow! I was in there and I was just like, holy shit! But because just like snowboarding, learning the history of snowboarding, I was learning the history of fucking punk rock and yeah. hip hop yes. and yes. R and B and soul, and I was like holy shit dude you know like yeah that's why i haven't really like even tr tried to play an instrument because i love listening so much <laughs> yeah, like sure. but anyways that's why that's another thing with editing like because one thing we really didn't talk about is i love editing so much which is rare right yeah. like i hated editing when i first did this thing uh, i don't know I, if i'd like your style editing <laughs> <laughs> i find it like calming now uh -huh. like i can do it but I wouldn't seek it out. Like yeah. I couldn't do it as a job and lose myself in it, I don't think. Interesting, yeah. But, but actually, that's not entirely true. I took a film class in high school, and we had the reel-to-reel. -reel. Like you'd put yeah. in one video cassette here, one here, and you had the two dials, and you could do the cuts and, and transfer. I love that shit. Yeah. That is really fun. Yeah, I mean... But you love it. Like, I do love it. I... I what I can reference right now, because this one struck a chord with me, is I was listening to Jib Girl's interview. Yep. And she was talking about Instagram edits in particular. And she was like, she, I think she basically said she has a song in mind. She goes out to get the snowboard clips just to put them to the song. And I, I've done that shit where I was like, yeah. well, of course I want to snowboard. But this song's so good, I gotta level up a little, you know. Yeah. And, oh, I like uh, that. That's dope. Uh, so when does the yeah. when does the Instagram thing hit for you? Mm, yeah. I, like, is uh, it pre career? It's obviously post. Oh no, it's it's after, after because yeah because I had done several think tank videos from 2006 to to 2000. 12 edit think think videos that's six years yeah. of video so yeah. you, you're filming a part every year and you're you're a regular snowboard pro guy at that level getting yeah a part. well i actually did a, a capita movie in between there and i did okay. a trans world movie yeah and then um and then after i did a video grass movie wow and a I did the Union movie and the 32 movie. So it was so are like, we adding years here? Like you we, did, we're up to 16. Did, yeah. So from, from, yeah. So there was a lot of video. It was a video part a year for sure. Like, but I mean, Jeremy and JP and my heroes, they, they did the same shit for of 20, course. you know? Of course. But I was also, the thing with our era of snowboarder after them was we were doing web edits too. Right. Where those guys would only be seen in the video part, which I loved. Totally. To just totally. see Kevin Jones show up in a video part, and that's all you see of him. Yeah. The web edits, I remember some DC web, web edits early on where I was like, this is current, this is last week. Yeah. Like, we're fucked. Yeah. It's, this is happening. On the same topic of conversation, I remember specifically when Instagram allowed 15-second videos, and I go, ah, shit. Didn't change anything, really followed by the next year a minute long that changed things quite drastically so you know that that year you yeah know i when remember that it. i was i was in salt lake and i was just like and i'm not a big fan of change but you have to adapt your formula and it came in and it came in like a hurricane you know yeah and it was a few years later you know i mean 
hats off to people that stay the course of the video part because you don't really need to right now it's actually like can be counterproductive and counterintuitive with how much it costs yeah how much it costs of your body how much it costs of your time and you're gambling that like you're gambling and let's face it like the analytics are are fun for companies and for people that are doing good you just go these are the numbers yeah this number equals that but you know what's happened in snowboarding media at least like way back when with the with the magazines is that the numbers were all skewed. They were all like just kind of bullshit. I mean, you that would be really sad if TikTok and Instagram were spewing shitty numbers. I think that there's um, like the big companies. Eastone told me the other day, he's like, don't pad your numbers because they know. Yeah. Those guys have some sort of number scrubbing program. Well, the, the bots thing. I mean, yeah. you know, it's funny with social media for me because... I can put some effort into something and I generally know like where it's going to fall number wise. If you, I, you if, how many followers do you have? I have, I think uh, we just looked it up like, like 140, 140. Yeah. 000. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty insane. awesome for snowboarding. It's incredible for, yeah, snowboarding. for snowboarding, especially. I mean, I don't get paid anymore having it. I'm sure it helps me. I'm sure it helps me maintain being 38 and being a snowboarder yeah but the thing that i like that's funny about it and um i always joke about this i joked about it with desiree a lot um is that like i'm like this fanatical snowboard guy that's kind of a fan of all the guys that's kind of on the inside yeah and there's no way instagram's gonna verify me with a blue check but that's kind of rad in a weird way because it's like it's like you see the blue checks running around and you're there's like a little bit of like i don't know do you guys see them on instagram the blue check and you're oh, just like fuck immediate, yeah, you're like well, that'll look cool to my my relatives you know i mean i've got what, like 2200 followers but now. wouldn't it be cool if your if your podcast I've n- had a blue I've never check even next thought to it? of it no? And no i don't think it would yeah but i don't think there's that many people that this show i'm it's not good enough to get in okay. front of them all right do you know what i mean like no, I mean, it's I, I i would be embarrassed if if that many people heard the way that i am taking it not that seriously yeah you found i found you <laughs> yeah that's rad because you're a fanatic yeah because you're a fanatical dude well you but you would love to have the blue check no i no i actually i think it's I actually, actually i think it's better that you I have i don't get paid to have the blue check so you know? many followers no blue check yeah and it's kind of insane i don't really get what, know what i'm getting at but i um, i would i made a joke with desiree because she got the blue check she and, got the blue check and it was like a, a seinfeld moment where i was like hey you want to give me the blue check i'll take the blue check of course i'll take it like if you want to give it to me i'll you know but i i don't want the blue check but like of course i'm gonna take it if they you know oh hell yeah but, uh, right right it's like a it reminds me of a larry david thing you know <laughs> absolutely one of the things about larry david that blew my mind is that he's never taken a photograph he's never used a camera <laughs> that is funny he's never taken a picture of anyone and he isn't that like a totally larry david thing? i mean i can't relate to it every time i'm on hill i'm you're the opposite. I'm the opposite. Video and we probably shot the, every run that we I'm did annoying. today. I'm annoying. I get it from my mom. My mom has scrapbooks all over the place, so <laughs> I developed it with video. And I get it, dude. Some days I am annoying. We're I, super fans. That's the thing is that we're super fans of the things like people yeah. like you have done. Yeah. And we want to do our own little one. Yeah. It, it's just like I'm in too deep now to like to like be worried about like. I do get it is upsetting when I'm like some I, I find somebody that's funny like that's one of my favorite things is when my friends are funny uh Joe Sexton is actually so funny we're on trips together I start filming him like a lot like a lot a lot yeah and then you get that point where the dude's like stop filming me. I hate that I hate being a nuisance to uh, somebody you know yeah. but I yeah. like getting a shot where like we're both like feeling cool it's it makes us it it makes life worth living or laughing or like i like getting the shot where when i'm on hill when i'm useless as a rider where i get a shot of another rider and we're beaming you know like it's just a that's a cool experience oh i'm a hundred percent on that too it's authentic for me like that's i 
I fucking love that. Yeah, I, I pulled out my phone with Devin this year and, and just filmed him. Walsh. He's carving around. Oh, so you're just riding with yeah. Devin. That's cool. I'm, I'm lucky. Yeah, I'm lucky awesome. because he Never lives him, where really. we where we live, and he rides where we ride. And for some reason, he lets me film him. He probably let anyone film him, but I just like jive with him. Yeah, like I jive with Jenna. Like yeah. I, like I jive with anybody. And you can see on the film, like as he he's just carving, he's carving towards the camera, and just like the happy look on his face. And yeah, yeah. My favorite thing for me is if it's somebody like Alex Oshu, who yeah. used to. Yeah, you know, I remember Alex. Yeah, yeah. He, he he put together parts. Yeah. He was in some kingpins and some yeah he's, whiteouts he's, maybe. He's, yeah, he's yeah. legitimate. Like he's he's one of those guys yeah, that he's... moved to Whistler and really made it happen. And but it, he hadn't filmed in so long, and it pushed him, and he did a stock inverted five, like it's just like textbook. oh his era, yes. So they had that thing that's that's like fucking riding a bike. Yeah, where the board is pointed exactly the right direction. Yeah. I was like, that was just textbook, Alex. Yeah. And the happiness afterwards. Yeah. It's He's a- like, oh, thanks for filming that. I'm like, dude. Thanks for doing that. Like, yeah, you got it. You got the bug too. I I love it. I love yeah. it. I, I love it more than getting a clip of myself. I think. Yeah, I've thought about that. I'm. I think I'm pretty selfish. I like both. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but at least on that note. Yeah. I I know what it's like to shoot another rider a oh, lot. Yeah, you yeah, know, and take dope. and I will never I will never walk on a rider because of how long I take to get tricks. So that's like. That's dope. That's like a little like oath i have with myself so well you've watched bomb holes yeah and grenier's getting amazing at like i mean people's parents are asking questions yeah he has me uh, ask yeah, a lot too yeah, he yeah. doesn't know anybody yeah yeah he knows about the person yeah, he does he goes deep in his research and i i actually got into this sort of through stand-up comedy and I got into stand-up comedy through Mark Maron's podcast, What the Fuck, like okay. WTF. That's why F and Rad, it was kind of like, I want to put fuck in the name because I can. Yeah. And because, yeah, fucking Rad, like, it comes up, you'll hear people say it, and it was kind of a like a warning to people that were going to listen that you probably don't want to listen to this if fucking Rad makes you upset. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can relate to your, your thoughts about your own podcast a little with... Um sometimes you need a creative outlet that you don't want to be cutthroat. Right. And I don't know. Is that what I'm getting? A little Dude, bit? I was just I, like, uh, I just, just want to do it. Cause it's the thing was when the bomb hole came out, like I'd been operating in the space relatively alone. Boot pack. I mean, right? yeah. Cause it, you kind of boot pack. Yeah. The, and Hey, I, there was the no, not snowboarding podcast. Yeah. And they were trying to oh, do, I think I did. Yeah. And, but they, they just weren't consistent. Yeah. Well, I, this is really fun that I'm not on Chris's cause, and I mean that in <laughs> a way, Chris, if you hear this is that I can talk about you cause it would be weird. <laughs> yeah, and the yeah. thing about Chris is I know him really good. He's a really close friend of mine. He was in my wedding. He's, um, incredibly hard worker. Oh, like you can tell, like, um, yeah. he'll say he wasn't a good snowboarder, but if you watch his 2015 oh. real snow when yeah. he, he fucking, is a good snowboarder. Oh, he's an incredible snowboarder still. Now. But he had to work yeah. extremely yeah. hard. Yes. And yeah. with yeah. the podcast, he, this guy, he's like so close to me that like, I don't even call him cause I know how busy he is, you yeah. know, unless yeah. I really had something I wanted to laugh or talk to him about. Yeah. And, um, he really doesn't want to have anybody on and let them down because he knows he's got a platform that's, fucking scary for a dude like me because like when i saw jp's i was like i know jp really well i was like oh this is gonna be gnarly like in a good way but gnarly it was hard for me with chris i'm gonna go there (laughs) like it's like rad yeah so this is this is super fun because i can't go there right like or or i I won't but Yeah. yeah um yeah, when I saw him during COVID started up, I was like, "Holy shit, man, you're doing it!" You know, because we're all looking for. Nah, I'm not. I'm not looking that hard for what's next. Right, right. But Chris owed it to himself, and he, he did a favor to snowboarding to to find this, yeah. find it. You know? Oh, are you kidding? Yeah. So like when that came out, 
I talked with uh, Mark Sullivan, and I always forget to mention Mark's podcast. Oh, yeah, I've done Mark's. Yeah, it was yeah. fun talking to him. Yeah, and Mark, is he's a consummate professional, and he's he's been doing it for quite some time, too. And he kind of called me and was like, these bomb hole guys, like, what do they think they're doing? And I was kind of like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. It's a free space. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, if- there, and there's no lack mentality here. So, like, keep doing yours, make yours good. And that's... You know, but I'm not saying I didn't feel the same thing. I was like, should I switch to like, like, should I get myself a studio? A lot of people come through Vancouver. Yeah. Should I, you know, harness that? But I'd already started traveling around. Yeah. And once I started traveling, I'm like, one time of doing this. Yeah. Like, there never used to be cameras. This without the cameras is so not nerve wracking you're in your home yeah that's you're just like you're at your house <laughs> yeah you guys you didn't take a drive no, to or a flight to think about it yeah to a studio with lights and now you go in and there's people watching like oh you're gonna do great i'm oh, a big yeah. fan like and and you're getting questions from people that you're like, oh my God, what's JP asking? Hey, what's the, you know, mentioning some most embarrassing thing that's ever happened in your life? And you're like, oh yeah, talk about that. Yeah. Uh, well, he basically just told it. So, yeah. So I fell in love with this. Like, I, it was Ken Achenbach that in the first season that said to me that I, you know, and now I've got a new friend. And I remember being like, we just talked for an hour. We're not like friends. What do you mean? But I, then I, I'm quick to it are. too. So yeah, we yeah, are. I mean, the thing is, I've been friends with them ever since. Yeah, I follow. If I meet somebody, I'm following them on Instagram because I'm just yeah. like, yeah, fuck, I'm I'm a slave of this platform, and of I'll course. play by the rules. Yeah, you know, yeah, or, totally. or whatever, whatever those whatever my rules are. I'm just like, fuck. Let's go to because I am absolutely fascinated with how you came up with a formula that worked for you that got you so oh it's not super hard it's literally uh i I should let you finish that question because i think i know what you were saying but the formula that got you to be known in snowboarding to a certain degree 100 percent. yeah you're gonna do it anyways you came in through a side door and and on top of that, you're a quirky rider yeah. with, and you and you've cho- your chosen, um, you know, the, genre yeah. is also quirk. Well, here, how much would it suck if you had a quirky rider like this, but he didn't know where any of the tricks he was messing with, or I just that's seems fraudulent almost you know yeah like, so there's authenticity there that that is you impossible can, people to, can do it you yeah, know yeah. but like yeah i love it i'm watching it anyway so fuck let's talk about it let's let's keep but you know i get to see it strangely with a new generation of these youtubers right and sometimes i'm like am i could i do this right and i'm like fuck no i think i'm from the old school we're like I don't want to be on film that much. You know, I don't want my personal life. Like if Mm, you ever watch mm. my social media, like I'm giving you snippets of the best. I'm not showing you like when people are dying or like there's heartache or marriage is tricky or whatever, you know? So like I see these new guys coming up in an almost more elevated version of how I came up, a backdoor of how I came up. And I'm like, hats off you guys are hard workers but right. i'm glad i came up in this like middle ground of the old guard and this youtube crazy guard of <laughs> right i'm totally not di- talking disrespect but if i took a back door these guys are going they're fucking somewhere like in another fucking well, county they're thinking about an algorithm yeah. when they're doing what they're doing whereas yeah. you were thinking about the things you were doing and you're having fun and just yeah. genuinely putting them yeah, out yeah which there. is no better no right. worse it honestly no. might the thing that's backfiring just a hair in my age right now right is i just love doing it so much that the fall is hard it's you mean the fall as in like, like the fall off of like just being able to to create like a viral bo- clip. Okay, that's inevitable. That's that's already like it takes a lot longer to get to a point where you're like, oh, because the kids have gotten so good, stuff gets 
stuff gets mundane the more it's seen. That's yes. obvious. Yeah. So I am just grateful that I was a part of being able to get lower hanging fruit, which I didn't even I don't even think of it as lower hanging fruit. It's just what I it's a t- way I can explain it. But yeah. I came in where a lot of tricks were like you could still develop tricks. Now it's like it's their time. You know, if I can break off a little here and there. Yeah. Because I sure as hell didn't get into snowboarding to take out my idols. I, I, I like, went there to ride alongside them. Yes. You know? Yeah. So, like, I wish some of my guys that I really looked up to were able to hang in there longer and just give us little bits. And But snowboarding doesn't have that as much as skateboarding does and that's okay or surfing because right. look we don't have the numbers so like look at there's you just follow the numbers mm, yeah and mm. this i know i don't want to go down the number trail but like you follow no, the numbers no you're absolutely right and about you're that. like you know i see it with just what brands put into bmx and surf and snow and it's like we're behind on the totem pole where skateboarding and right so anyhow like i i would love to have a, a long career you know I, oh, so got you all right so we've run out of tape which means we have to come back basically yeah i mean i can talk <laughs> yeah and i can talk and we got lots more to talk about i yeah. th- thank you for bringing it dude like it's re- been really nice to meet you yeah blacked out i'd like to meet you too <laughs> yeah you know what it was uh it's an eye opener it's kind of fun to get to know your story in real time like that's dope yeah i could have gone either way could have snowboarding could have just kind of kept going gnarly 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 and then i probably wouldn't have got a break or a paycheck which would have been fine because i would have got a job doing something else and then maybe my change from snowboarding to something else wouldn't have been as hard but yeah i'm in here now yeah yeah and yeah. well you've got you've got a solid following of fans yeah and uh and I'm, it, yeah, like, I, yeah, what is next? What do you, what do you, it's probably, we don't have enough time. To... Well, I'll, I'll be quick and, yeah. uh, you know, sometimes the way my body's working and people that, you know, climbing up in age will know this. Sometimes you just feel like, hey, what do I have to give and how much more do I want to hurt this thing? And then sometimes I'm like, you know what? Just strike when, when the iron's hot and, um, do this a little bit longer, you know, because you you love it and um, you always planned on kicking and screaming on the way out. So <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah, that, that's real. That's real talk, though, because like whenever you see a pro and you're like, man, he's washed. Or, Why didn't he leave? It's not that easy. You oh, know? no shit. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even imagine how hard. No, it it's be. not that easy. It almost feels like I mean, death is the ultimate, but it. it it feels pretty close to losing a part of your soul, you know? Uh, yeah. But life still goes on, and uh, I still, like, want to contribute to snowboarding and maybe do a little bit more um, behind the scenes, too. I think you're a creative mind. Yeah. So uh, we've seen creative minds from all generations of snowboarding, you know, create a little path. Yeah, I, I'll tell you one thing is I work really well when I have other people to, to get bounce things off and stuff on my own, I, I get lonely, you know? So yeah, I got you. So, uh, yeah, you won't see me YouTube and by myself. That's not going to happen. <laughs> nice. Dude. But, yeah. But that, but I do watch a lot of YouTubers and, uh, respect to those guys because there's sometimes when a video part comes on, I'm tired of it. Yeah. rather hear somebody talk to me and tell me a story you know i hear you man so. dude scotty thank yeah. you so much thanks for being for, on the show thanks for having me do one of these yes yeah. now that we've got cameras rolling yeah and uh we're coming back yeah yeah we come through here every year we'll do spring with you hopefully your knees will be yeah the new, new stuff to talk about I mean, yeah yeah i just had a baby so things have been pretty crazy oh my god yeah. i can't even imagine that's yeah, a little knee injury is actually, they don't tell you this, but a little knee injury is actually pretty good for having a kid because you get to really focus on being a good dad instead of, I gotta go, I gotta go, you know, get on the chairlift, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's been good. 
big transition. Yeah. <laughs> Rad. Thanks, yeah. man. No problem. All right. F and Rad shout outs this week to Scott, his wife, and their kids for allowing us to take over their home for this interview. Thanks to everyone out there listening, and especially you guys who listen right to the end. I want to say a special thank you to Eric Hindman. Eric listened to every episode of the F and Rad podcast. Too fucking rad, dude. Thank you. Be sure to come back next week for another episode of F and Rad Snowboarding presented by Vans and brought to you by SIA Productions.